Hello and welcome back to the Super United Croatia Rapid and Blitz event. Day one of the Blitz has kicked off with Fabiano Caruana still in the lead with 21 points, followed by Wesley So and MVL with 16 and a half, and Ali Reza Ferugia with 16 points. The first game I wanted to look at today was Ivan Saric versus Jan Nepomnishi. Ivan with the white pieces, e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, takes, takes, knight f6, Knight c3, a6, we have a knight orf here. Bishop e3, e5. Knight b3, bishop e7, and rook g1. Rook g1 is somewhat of a rare move in this position. Typically people play something more along the lines of f3 or queen d2. Normal things that are seen in these structures. Preparing castling, something like that. But rook g1 is very aggressive, aiming to just push the g-pawn up the board and attack. Which makes sense for blitz. So, b5, g4... Bishop b7, queen d3, and was preparing castling, castling queenside perhaps, but also with the queen on the third rank, there could be some potential to swing over. d4, knight d5, takes, takes, castles. And now the queen is actually eyeing h7 as well. So white plays the move g5, knight d7, castles queenside, a5. Knight d2, getting out of the way so a4 doesn't come with a tempo. Preparing to bring the knight into the center with knight e4, and hopping into the attack. Queen c7, king b1, completing castling. Rook c8, and knight e4. a4, bishop h3. And there's a few things going on with this move. Number one, there's a pin on this knight, so we're restricting some play here. But the bishop can also hop onto the f4 square, or the f5 square from here, and continue to target h7 and the king. Bishop a6, attacking the queen, queen d2, b3, c takes b, a takes b, and a takes b. So, this is a pretty tricky situation for the white pieces. The king, after a takes b, both of these open files towards the king are, are very dangerous. And white will have a lot of trouble running away from an attack, and it seems like white's going to either need to trade some pieces or finish their attack themselves. So, queen b7, targeting b3, knight f6 check, and this is a mistake, but again, in blitz, white is already losing. Uh, you need to try and break through and create an attack of your own. After bishop takes f6, g takes f6, Queen takes b3. Yvonne found a brilliant continuation here. So black still should be winning, but after rook takes g7, king h8 is a complete blunder. It gives it, a, I believe that's a missed win mark, but it's more than that. It, it actually loses. It goes from winning to losing. King f8 had to, had to be played, but Jan did not anticipate white's next move. So king h8... And rook takes h7, double question mark, sacrificing the rook, as they say. And uh, yes, this is just giving a rook up for nothing. The h file is completely blocked, so it's not like another rook's coming in this way. So what's the point? After king takes h7, the bishop hops into that f5 square. The king is really, really running out of squares here. If king g8, something... I was thinking bishop h6. Let me see if this works. Oh, that's right. That's right, I forgot about that. There's, there's Black has mate threats as well. Bishop d3 uh, is, is an issue because I'm cut off on the c-file. I can't run that way, which I forgot. So if king, if king g8, I guess we have to play this move order. And then king f8 would lose to bishop h6 in this way. I was just trying to say maybe I can still win in a slow way, but it's not true. Uh, instead, Black played king h8 and bishop a7 was played... The difference between this and any other move with the bishop, okay, the point is that you're opening the queen up and eyeing h6 and just checkmating the black king. Uh, but here, you're blocking one of these rooks, so specifically the a rook. So after bishop d3, bishop takes d3, there's no queen h2, mate. And if black ever takes on a7, queen h6 just comes with checkmate. And this was all found relatively quickly. Rook g7 was played instantly. King h8, Yvonne thought for 30 seconds, played rook takes h7 immediately, 
played bishop f5 immediately and played bishop a7 immediately. So in 30 seconds he saw all of this, and after this uh, Jan just sacrificed the queen to try and get rid of this attack, and it fizzled down into just a winning position. Of course with mistakes along the way because it splits, but uh, Yvonne did end up winning here, and we'll just kind of skip through, which is Kind of a big upset. Very, very impressive game. Let's move on now to one of the more controversial games. Uh, Wesley So versus Jan Nepomniszczy again. This was in round 9 of the Blitz. e4, c5, knight f3, d6, bishop b5, bishop d7, c4. So we've been seeing a lot of, a lot of bishop b5 in Sicilians in this tournament. Knight c3, e5, d3, d7, and h4. I like in Blitz when you tend to see these moves more often. I'm sure it's just a good move regardless, but I think that players do end up playing in more provo provocative ways in Blitz. So just trying to push the pawn as far as it'll go. Knight g8. My instinct would be to play h5 and just stop that from happening, but I'm also pretty weak. Uh, knight g8 seems bizarre to me because you're undeveloping a piece, but I suppose when the knight comes to e7, the point is, okay, I'll develop my knight to g6, but that doesn't make sense here. So maybe we're just going to reroute the knight somewhere else and make room for the bishop to develop. So knight d5, bishop e7, rook b1, knight f6, castles, castles, bishop takes c6, b takes c6, knight takes e7, exclam, I mean, not sure why that's... The only other option would be like knight e3 or something. Okay, knight g4 and you lose the h-pawn, or at least you're just- the darkster bishop becomes active, so you have to take it. Knight h2. Knight h2 preparing to push the f-pawn, perhaps. h6, f4, d5, takes, takes. Knight back to f3, getting a tempo on the queen. After we've accomplished what we wanted to accomplish, which was opening the f-file, there are bishop takes h6 tactics in the air. Not right now, but potentially. Queen to e7. E takes d. C takes bishop f4. Bishop f5. Rook c1. Rook e8. Rook e1. And more fights are happening for the only open file. And b7. Takes, takes. b3. Just being solid. Not having anything hanging. d4. Queen d2. Knight g4. Knight really would be happy on this e3 square potentially, or putting anything on that e3 square would be an accomplishment. So rook e1 takes, knight takes, queen, d, queen e7, knight f3, f6, restricting that knight even further, there's not really a great place for the knight. Queen e1 trying to trade, queen d8, black says no. However, king f7 seems like would be a little bit better, and if there is a trade of queens, then the Black King is already more active in this endgame. So if you're going to trade, do it on my terms type situation. Instead, queen d8, queen e2, g5, h takes, h takes, bishop g3, king f7, knight h2, and back to f3, bishop d1, or bishop e1. Maybe we are going to be pushing the b-pawn very soon. A5, trying to stop this. A3, insisting. Knight G4. Now that the bishop's not covering E3, maybe the knight's gonna hop in there. So B4 is accomplished. Takes, takes. Black tries to get a, a pass pawn of his own. B5, A3. Bishop B4 is a mistake because of Queen A8. Instead, just B6 would be great. Because if Queen takes B6, Queen E8, and there's going to be some sort of perpetual, I would assume. But if Wesley is trying to win, that's he's obviously not going to play b6. Queen a8, queen a2, trying to blockade. Queen back to e8. Queen takes a3. Queen e3 coming in. And this is this is looking pretty, pretty dangerous. Everything's barely hanging on. The d-pawn is, is lost at this point. Queen e2. Oh, threatening queen f1 mate. That's the point. Uh, instead, knight f2 seems pretty strong. King g1, there's knight takes d3 with check. But this threatens mate. 
So, oh, it doesn't, no, it doesn't threaten me. I'm sorry. The knight can go back to g1. Okay. Queen c1, knight e3. This is the goal. g2. Queen d2, trying to defend against this, but after queen f1, king h2, bishop takes d3. The, the white king is falling apart, so we have to create counterplay by pushing our pawn. Bishop e4, bishop d6, takes, takes, queen takes. This king is is nearly is nearly checkmated. The white queen is doing a lot to defend. It's, it's good to also be on the offense if you can do so. So d3, b7, d, d2 takes, and of course this fork is an issue. White will make a new queen, but after after some checks, black is still up. I mean, look at the pawns. They're not only connected past pawns, but they are connected past pawns that are going near the insanely weak white king. Queen e4, king g1, knight takes c4. Now black actually is up two pawns. And here is, is, is where things went wrong. Uh, queen g8 check was played, and black is just completely, completely winning. But Jan actually hesitated here playing the move king h5. Enough that he actually, yeah, he actually, I was, I was a little confused, because the game did end after king h5, because Jan flagged, he didn't hit his clock fast enough, in a completely winning position, and Wesley did not notice, and they played a few more moves, but after the move queen e1 check, where it's, it's nearly checkmate, Wesley decided to, to call the time, I assume he just looked over, because it's like, what else, what else am I, I'm lost? And I think there was actually an appeal going on because we, we were assuming that Jan didn't understand that he flagged several moves prior and knew that he played the move queen e1 very quickly, probably thinking it was a clock malfunction. So a very sad result for Jan, and he did seem to go on a bit of a tilt this tournament. With Fabi so far out in the lead, it doesn't seem like anyone's going to be able to catch him. There are nine more games to be played. Join us tomorrow where the Blitz will continue with nine more games in the finale of the tournament. Fabiano Caruana has an enormous lead and it seems nearly impossible to catch him, so it seems like it's going to be a fight for second place. Thanks for watching, see you next time.